So recently I needed to do some thread cutting on the mini lathe. I was uh, I was trying to make a three quarter ten stud. This was the uh, test piece, and this was the thread I wanted to cut. However, this is a a ten threads per inch stud. Now, if we look at the uh, at the table on the side here, you can achieve different threads per inch on the lead screw by changing our gears A, B, C and D with these values. What you will notice here is there is no 10 threads per inch, suggesting it's not possible to get 10 threads per inch on this, um, on this lathe. And while not strictly true that you can get exactly 10 threads per inch, you can get close enough to make this stud and make it work with a three quarter 10 bolt. There is nothing there, there's not a lot of slop in the, uh, in the thread, so I think that's sufficient. So where do we find the gear combinations for 10 threads per inch? Well, what you're going to have to do is, uh, is Google, I think, minilade.com and other such sites have that information. There's a calculator and if you put in the threads per inch you require, it will give you different combinations of gears to achieve that, um, that thread per inch figure. And what I'll do next is I'll set the cover off and we can start to look at these um, these gears inside and hopefully we can work out which one is A, B, C and D. So this top one here is A. The one directly below it which you can't see here because it's smaller is B. C is on the front D is here and this connects directly to the lead screw and sometimes you have to undo this bolt here and there's another one on the back of here to get everything meshed together correctly that gives you some adjustment that doesn't give you sufficient adjustment for every combination of um, gear that those calculators give you so while we're in here let's just take a look at this thing um, running um, switch it on put it in the forward position and uh, let's watch it turn. So when cutting a thread, ideally what we need to do is, um, is drive the saddle and the slides and the stock at a given rate along the bar. And we've already set up the gears to make the lead screw turn at a certain speed but to make the saddle and the slide move at, um, at that speed we have to engage it and that's what this lever's for here so now when I turn the machine on we see we get some automated movement now what I can do is I can disengage and slide the whole thing back by hand but then I have to re-engage this indicator dial here. Well, let's take a look at that indicator dial and see what I mean. Theoretically, this indicator dial will let us engage and disengage at the same point when we're making threads. However, you can't just pick a single number, drive this, or even forwards, Drive this to a given point, disengage, roll back, and expect that when I come back to one here, that my position of the tool is in the same place. Doesn't work like that. And again, there's another table that you can reference that will tell you for a given threads per inch which of these numbers you can use. Sometimes you can use any of them. Sometimes you can only use the evens, sometimes you can use the odds, sometimes it's a specific number. So you have to look that up and be aware of it. So here's the indicator table for the indicator wheel. And it tells you for each of those threads per inch that we're trying to achieve, which settings I can use on the indicator wheel. So you can see for 12, it's all the odds one three five 13 I can use one and nothing else 
14 is either 1 or 5 and uh, and it goes on from there but like I said before there is no setting for 10 threads per inch what I prefer to do as you will see in the remainder of the video is to leave everything engaged so I'm at 1 forward I drive it forward I start to cut the thread to the depth I want I stop the machine and I slide out as much as I need to obviously you don't need to move out that much reverse the machine and drive back and what will this will ensure is that you're always starting in exactly the same position there's no room for mistake so we would turn back in and add a little bit depending on what we're cutting back to forward drive in stop back out reverse and as you see this can get a little bit tedious the last thread I cut which is this one right here took me around 30 or 40 minutes now with a, um, a tap and die set I could do that much much quicker so I think this is really only of major use is when you're cutting something custom that you can't do any other way.